cryptocurrency futures contract on one of your exchanges? When will we see it? I don't know. I think there is something, there is a trend here that we can't ignore, in my mind. Uh, so I don't discount it. Uh, it's early days. Um, there is something about um, technology today that many people are more comfortable with it than they are with the institutions of government and, and society that I grew up with. Um, people put more faith in a guy named Satoshi Nakamoto that no one has ever <laughs> met than they do in the U.S. Fed. Um, you know, that's an interesting trend that I don't think you can ignore. People in your city um, avoid getting into a taxi that's been inspected, that has a medallion, yeah. that's been certified, and will get into a car with a nameless driver because that person has three thumbs up. And we don't know whose <laughs> thumbs they are, we don't know how they got there, but there is this comfortableness with technology so, that you can see. It's and coming. I it's coming. I wouldn't rule out <laughs> anything around currency. What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Shout out to everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. So it's the weekend. We are seeing the weekend dip. Not that bad of a dip. But if you did happen to look at the charts yesterday or you went to, especially CoinMarketCap, CoinMarketCap had a little bit of an issue with Tether. So any of the coins that were tied into Tether were showing massive increases, so everybody was getting super excited, and then obviously we come back to reality and everything is in the red. So Bitcoin took a f over 5.5% hit, so obviously the altcoins are you know, double feeling it. Whatever happens to Bitcoin tends to translate a lot heavier into the other alts. If we look at what's up today, we see it's Emmercoin with 35.20%. However, I will say that it's only on one exchange and it's only doing $95,000 worth of volume. So that's a very, very easily manipulated cryptocurrency. In fact, it's already pulled back since I brought it up before. So you're probably wondering what's up with the intro? What's going on? You know, where's our funny introduction that we usually get? Well, that was actually Jeff Sprecher and he's the CEO of ICE. And I know a lot of people have been talking about it lately. A lot of people have been hearing about it. So I'm not gonna tell you what you already know but the interesting thing is that that particular interview was from four months ago. So you could clearly see that there was a lot of interest in cryptocurrencies, especially from Jeff himself. So if you guys don't know what it is, uh, I'm just going to let them explain it. So this is basically what's going on in a nutshell. So literally just as I uploaded it, they instantly hit me with this copyright issue so I'm not gonna be able to play that so I'm just gonna leave the link in the description and you guys can watch the video yourself that being said back to the video so that's basically it in a nutshell obviously I figured just let them explain it because we went over it last night in the live stream and I spoke about it briefly yesterday and let's be honest it's on Twitter it's on every YouTube account it's on steam it everyone's talking about it but it is a really big deal and the thing that I like is how Jeff Sprecher looks at it and how he realizes that times are changing and people do view things Things differently. I loved his example of how you don't want to get into a car with somebody you don't know, but yet look, we do it all the time with Uber because, well, they have a good rating, so right? We trust them. So he says, Bitcoin would greatly simplify the movement of global money. It has the potential to become the first worldwide currency. The move will see ICE not only launch a physically settled Bitcoin futures product, but also custody crypto assets directly and help merchants such as Starbucks, which has already signed on to the platform as a partner, accept digital assets such as Bitcoin for everyday payments. And the other thing too is interesting is if you go over to ICE's website, you notice that they do have a cryptocurrency data feed. So the feed actually has a lot of other cryptocurrencies as well. You can see Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, EOS. It even has NEO, Omizego, right? So there's all these different ones. So, I mean, that's not saying that it's going to, that that has any effect on what they're doing, but these are the ones that they're already, they already have a data feed for, for people to actually look at if they're interested. So obviously you could see that they are at the forefront of pushing this forward. And the one thing that I want to talk about too is when we speak about tech, and things don't move as fast as we want them to, or we have certain expectations, you have to look at things like this article, for example. You know, this was posted. It says, as Apple passes $1 trillion, you may recall that in 1980, Massachusetts barred sales of the IPO, deeming them too risky. And this is actually a screenshot from the publication, and it says, Apple computers set to go public today, Massachusetts bars sale of stocks as risky. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So even things like Apple was... Uh, you know, deemed risky at one point. So that's something also. But then in, in other news, you want to talk about other really awesome adoption and, and bringing more 
possibilities to the masses. Now, currently, Coinbase Custody says they're planning support for 40 cryptocurrencies, although I do have to correct this article. I'm pretty sure it's only 37, but who's counting, right? So anyway, they say that Coinbase announced that it is exploring the addition of many existing and forthcoming crypto assets for storage only. So that's something to consider, and we'll be working to add them as quickly and safely as possible. So you're looking at the Coinbase Custody. So you're not going to be able to buy these, but you'll be able to store them on on coinbase as a wallet which is better than nothing but the company also says that you know none of these are guaranteed and they're simply just exploring the option so you can see right here basically this is what they are this is the official um a release of it right here so if you zoom in you know you can see they have a lot they have icon ontology Tat Tattoo, which I have to say, I've heard a lot about that. The one thing I don't really like necessarily about that company is they constantly send me emails all the time asking me to like so I don't really like that approach. But anyway, you have Wanchain uh, Foam, which people have been talking about as well, Hedera Hashgraph, as well as EOS Monero. Neo would be awesome, I think. That'd be totally cool. Tezos, VeChain, Nem. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of possibilities. So it doesn't really mean anything, guys. It just means that it's going to essentially be a custody. But for anyone that's freaking out and you think that Bitcoin and crypto is dead and you're about to throw in the towel, let me tell you why I woke up this morning and I know that it's definitely not. And it's because Bizanachi has come out with yet another video, Uga Baga Part 2. So the day that <laughs> I I was worried because I had, you know Bizanachi hadn't put out some videos in quite some time. So I personally think that as long as this dude keeps putting out crypto, then crypto is alive and well. Okay. A little bit of humor. Moving on past this, we discussed Coinbase. Now let's get into some coin news, talk about what's going on, because there's always coin news. There's always something to discuss. So you have VeChain introducing the drug and vaccine traceability. Um, solution. So obviously, you know that China has been facing a bit of an issue recently with their tragic vaccine scandal, where it was recently discovered that Chinese vaccine manufacturers provided hundreds of thousands of faulty and falsely documented vaccines to Chinese school children, which is really terrible to hear that. So basically, in uh, VeChain's drug and vaccine traceability sol solution, highly sensitive IoT devices capture and record to the VeChain Thor blockchain all data, including in vaccine manufacture and transport, including getting vaccines from manufacturers, storage facilities, cold chain distribution, hospitals, and even usage. While ensuring the reliability of the data source, VeChain's solution also eliminates the potential risk in the whole process and ensures that vaccine records are immutable and permanent. So there you guys go. Real world use cases. And these are things that we definitely need because we can't afford any more of these tragic situations that are happening. It's very, very unfortunate what happened over there as well. And then I also want to move on and talk a little bit about EOS. So Dan Larimer proposed a way that he could lower the capital cost of using the EOS network. So this new system would allow users to delegate bandwidth to each other. The idea is similar to the proposal outlined in the original EOS IO um, white paper. The ability to delegate bandwidth implies the ability to rent unused bandwidth. From this, token holders have an opportunity cost associated with not renting their unused bandwidth, the post had mentioned. So according to Dan Larimer, the next step is creating an efficient rental market, including price discovery and liquidity, ensuring that the resources are available always at competitive price. Moreover, this market will allow holders to lend their tokens at a fee. It will be in exchange for loss of some liquidity for the loan duration. However, it is to be noted that there's no risk of losing any capital to the lender. So that is just a proposal from Dan Larimer. We also have coming out of NEO, 60 plus dApps have been deployed on the NOS, NOS, NEO operating system, whatever you want to call it, during the developers event. So this is really awesome. And the thing is, is it's just the test net. It's not even the main net yet. So it's really cool to see the community coming together and developing. That's the one thing I love about NEO is the, the developer community is so tight knit. And it's really awesome to see them actually using it. And on a side note, since we're on NEO, I just wanted to let you guys know that the Travala or Travala um, Switchio trading competition has seven more days to go. So, you know, obviously they have first prize 17,500 AVA, second 12,500, and third 7,500. So if you want to get involved in that, that's something you can get into. Also, you have IOTEX partnering with Lineable. So to kind of key in on the significance of this partnership, Lineable is a hardware company that builds smart wearable devices to keep families safe and connected. They partner with telecom giants around the world to connect their products, which offer SOS alerts, location tracking, geofencing, and health monitoring. So kind of like an Apple Watch in a sense, you know, or like a Fitbit or something like that, but 
with their own unique use cases. So Lineable is gonna use IOTEX's blockchain to ensure full privacy of user data, including the geolocation health, and to securely share verifiable user data with third parties such as research institutions to pre-diagnose medical conditions. IOTEX and Lineable hope to connect over a million Lineable devices to the IOTEX blockchain next year. Also, talking about Vertcoin. So Vertcoin is a coin that we used to talk about a lot last year. They had a lot of that. Remember when we were going through the whole ASIC mining thing and they were really big? We were talking about Groestal coin and Vertcoin and everybody was, you know, all those ASIC resistant coins were kind of pumping. So, well, it was those and then it was also um, Segwit coins, right? I don't know. It's like, what's the flavor of the week, right? So anyway, some of the updates from Vertcoin is the multi-platform OCM. So they say we've currently researched the possibility of redeveloping the one-click miner into a multi-platform version using Go. The first concepts are promising. Also, we've introduced a new streamlined website that includes a simple video showing new users what Vertcoin is about in simple to understand visual language. The goal of the new website was also to more effectively communicate and inform everyone about Lit and Lit Box. So Lit, which is the Lightning Network implementation that's being worked on at MIT's Digital Currency Initiative, they say a lot's been happening in Lit over the past month, including the implementation of hash time locked contracts, a complex and important ingredient to building multi-hop payments and off-chain atomic swaps. They go on to say a lot more. I'll drop a link in the description. They're also starting to do a bit of a marketing campaign. So, uh, Yeah, to kick things off, you're welcome, guys. I didn't even know that. So, you know, there you go. Everything that's been happening. So hopping into some crypto news, super, super, super quick. So you're seeing that BitHum is now allowing uh, withdrawals. They've reopened withdrawals and deposits again. So obviously there was that issue at the end of June. They said hackers had stole around 30 million. Then they kind of re-clarified and said it was closer to 17 million due to ongoing participation, support, and cooperation of cryptocurrency exchanges, etc. So long story short, it's open. We're good to go. Check it out if that's your if that's your thing. Also, we have renewable cryptocurrency mining is the future. So this article goes in to discuss how we can actually combat against this whole argument against proof of work being a terrible waste of electricity, et cetera, et cetera. So now you're seeing a lot of mining farms. So you have hydro miner, golden fleece, individual miners, and Estonian wind farms all popping up. So they're using wind and water and other renewable resources as well. So this, in a sense, would make it completely feasible. I mean, if you could use natural recurring resources that wouldn't harm the environment, wouldn't, you know, over use electricity and be able to mine the Bitcoin, then essentially, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's really not complicated, guys. I mean, we're going to have to figure out a way around this. You know, we have to work together as people to figure out a better solution. And they're already starting to do that. So that's awesome. And before we go, guys, I just wanted to say that this was on Reddit. It says this coffee is sold in thousands of stores all over Switzerland. Collect your cryptocurrency code under the cookie which is right here, which I have to say, guys, coffees come with cookies in uh, Switzerland? You need to get on that that coffee cookie boat, America. Anyway, so you enter your code and then you get your own cryptocurrency. So basically the cryptocurrency, it's more of like a coupon, you know, whatever. Some people are dissing it saying, oh, I wouldn't want this to be my first introduction to cryptocurrencies. But guys, I think any introduction into cryptocurrencies is good. Who cares if your first crypto you ever buy is like, cryptocurrency coffee points or cookie points, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. As long as you're getting involved, you're learning to use it and you're having that experience, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, or, you know, cookie cryptocurrency points. It, to me, it doesn't matter. As long as people are getting involved, they're using it and they're really seeing what it's like to get involved with crypto. So that's my two Satoshis on it. Don't want to go on too long today, guys. There's no reason to drag this on all day. It is Saturday. It's the weekend. Go out, enjoy yourself, have a fun time. Pretty nice day out here. A little bit cloudy, kind of sunny. I might try to go out and enjoy myself as well. That being said, guys, thank you so much again for coming back to the channel. Everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting, you guys are awesome. You're the reason that I do this every single day. That being said, my name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And peace out.